creating an unrateable base in Rust again, but this time a whole lot crazier. With the similar design to the mathematically unrateable castle, the idea behind the base is to hide the TC in this maze of a build, causing the raiders to have no clue where to raid through. But just finding the TC isn't all they have to worry about, because this base has a shooting floor, roof peaks, and a whole bunch of turret angles. The base is already strong, but I plan to upgrade this base even further by turning it into the most high-tech base possible, with Tesla coils that electrocute anybody on the base, a raid alarm that catches any offliners, and so much more. But will all these upgrades truly make the base unraidable? Well, to find that out, I gotta put it to the test. So, let's get over to the beach. All right, we are in. It is me, Jay Tellis, back again with another video, and boys, I got a plan for today. I seen how much you guys love to watch me live out of the unrateable castle, and I figured I'd try another base design by the same creator, Maverick. But if you thought that last base was insane, just wait till you see this one. I think this one takes the cake for being the most unique base in the game. But if you know me, you know I always have to put my own little twist on the base too. And my twist on this base is gonna be turning it into the most high-tech base possible. This was meant to be a 100k special, but you guys have blown that number out of the water so fast. And for hitting 100k, I told you guys to ask me any questions you had about me, and uh, you guys had some interesting ones. The first comment I seen was from Canman, and he was asking me, do I like men? Only you, Mr. Canman, only you. Then Mr. Leo Porter said, I talk like Nick830. Mods ban that guy and blow up his fucking house. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's enough reading comments for me, man. But actually, I do really appreciate you boys for all the comments you left on the last video. I literally seen them all. And I hope you guys know how much I appreciate the support you guys have been giving me. We're on the road to one milli, and I appreciate every single one of you guys that are subscribing. Now, it's time to get working on this base. Getting the base down is easier said than done. In order to start, there are a few things I need to take care of. First of those things is to figure out where I want to build. The build spot is going to require easy access to farm and a monument that provides a lot of tech trash and HQM because electricity parts aren't cheap. I noticed towards the bottom right of the map there was a missile silo and an HQM quarry, but it was going to be a long walk to get down there. So before trying to make my way down there, I wanted to work on getting the next thing I need, and that's a gun. Unfortunately, I don't have any gun blueprints on this server, so I was going to either have to find a gun or steal one from another player. And stealing one means that I'm going to need some sort of a weapon. So I went into the ferry terminal to get some cloth components. And now with more than enough cloth, all I have to do is go farm up some wood and I can make a bow. And with that bow now crafting, all I had left to do was go get some stone for some arrows. But before I had the chance to do that, someone was farming a tree in front of me. Well, there's a guy hitting a tree. And with no arrows to fight him with, all I had was this Ioka that I was crafting. So that meant that I was gonna have to get real close without him noticing. All right, here we go. I'm back here, mother... <laughs> I just fucking killed Helen Keller, bro. Holy shit, he can't hear anything. I need some fucking headphones. <laughs> After taking out the death kit, I made my way over to Oxum so that I could get a green card. Let's go with the green cards here. And with the green card now secured, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video. Bandit Camp. Bandit Camp is one of the most popular sites out right now with their authentic rust wheel, crazy case battles, and intense mines. If you're like me and you love to make huge gains on the wheel in game, why not give it a shot for some real cash? Oh! Oh my god! Right now, if you use my code JTELUS or click the link in the description, you'll get a free 15 cents to try the site out with, plus a 5% deposit bonus. But if you're gonna use the site, make sure you're of age and don't be stupid. Now, back to the video. And with the green card now secured, I wanted to make my way over to Harbor to get a blue. But while I was walking down the shore, I noticed a rib that looked like it was freshly parked. Dude, what are the odds someone left something in this rib? Oh! Oh my god! I swear this shit ain't scripted, man. Now, it wasn't the most ideal gun, but it was indeed a gun. Unfortunately, it wasn't very healthy, so I wouldn't be doing much shooting with it. But it still would be good enough to protect me while I went over to Harbor and grabbed the blue card. Blue card secured. And after doing that, it was getting to the point where I was way too loaded to just be walking around. So I needed to start making my way over to my build spot. But then I heard something off in the distance that made me change my mind about leaving so soon. Oh. 
Guys, somebody's raiding. I, I gotta go. I can't. Now, do I need to go to this raid? No. But am I a degenerate PvP lover who can't resist going to every shot he hears? Yes. And there was a chance I could get a better gun if I go to this raid. So I put a little one by one down to stash all the loot I've been collecting and went over to check out the raid. But after taking a closer look, it seemed like they were already gone. What? No way I missed them. I'm not gonna lie, I'll take the scraps though. I spent some time picking through the base, getting everything and anything I could possibly need, and then it was time to go. But there was one issue. Uh... Technical difficulties? I can't get out. I don't know if it was the boxes or the Adobe skins, but for some reason I wasn't able to jump out the window. So I was gonna have the F1 kill and run back here and hope nobody grabs the loot. But unfortunately, when I got back to the base, I heard exactly what I hoped I wouldn't. The sound of somebody's feet inside the base. No shot someone's in the base then. What? It was unlucky, but I had nothing to lose at this point. I had to run in there and try to grab a gun. Good dude. Oh, he's naked. <laughs> that was way closer than I wanted it to be. It was close, but I managed to kill the guy just in time. And I had a little surprise that I didn't even know I had in my inventory. What the fuck? I didn't even notice this had a rocket in it. All this loot I just got would help me out a ton, but there was still so much left in the base. So I went home as fast as I could to depot and then ran back, but... When I got back there, I noticed something. Wait, what? The base owners are online. Wait, this is the same guy I just killed inside the base. It turns out that the guy that almost stole all the loot from me was actually the base owner. And after catching me inside his base the first time, he sealed up the base quick. So there was going to be no more getting loot out of there. But that's all right, because I pretty much got all the good stuff out on the first run. But he wasn't very happy about me stealing from him. All right, well, there's nothing we could do now. It's sealed, but... Oh, dude. Poor guy, bro. Rest in peace, Tyrone. <laughs> well, after that, it's safe to say the first goal is now taken care of. Getting a gun. From finding the P2 in the rib, getting the scraps from the raid, and even taking out poor Tyrone for his Tommy. I'd say I'm pretty well supplied in the gun department. And now with having these guns, it means that I can work on my next goal a little safer. And that's collecting all the farm for my base. But I don't want to start farming until I get my hands on a jackhammer. So I grabbed up all the comps in my little one by one and started making my way over to Outpost. But on my way over there, I seen something that I couldn't resist going to take a closer look at. There's a full metal AK kid going into Oxums. Oh, dude, he's probably recycling. I gotta go in there. I'm gonna just drop this stuff right here. Yoink! <laughs> well, it wasn't part of the plan, but I'll take a free AK kit. And on top of that, he had some scrap too. And with that scrap, I went into Outpost and bought a jackhammer. And then I figured it was about time for me to start making my way down to the build spot. So I filled up my inventory and went over to the rib that I got the P2 from and started to drive down to the bottom right of the map. Oh, we finally made it. And after safely making it to the build spot, I dropped down a starter base to hold all the farm. Then I went out to work on the next goal, collecting all the farm for the main base. But all this farming was going to take some time. So instead of killing you guys with boredom, I'm going to quickly go through everything I did. Obviously, I hit a ton of nodes and I farmed up enough trees to fill a whole inventory with wood. But after that, I needed to take a break from farming to get the rest of the loot out of my starter one by one. But that's on the other side of the map. So it was going to be a long walk home. And on that walk, I took out a few guys collecting some more guns. You fucking can't me. 
and you guessed it, back to farming. I was getting closer and closer to my goal, but it was getting quite repetitive at this point, and I ended up seeing an airdrop off in the distance that I could not resist going to check out. The odds he gets like a. Oh my god. I was literally just about to say C4. I may have gotten a little too greedy trying to counter this because I ended up getting outnumbered and lost my AK kit. I was beyond the wall! But that's okay because at this point I should have enough farm to build the main base. Well, hopefully. The only way to really be sure is to work on the next goal building the main base. But before I even had the chance to start, I heard some shots going off at Missile Silo. And you should already know by now, I can't resist going to shots. But I wasn't 100% sure on how many there were, so I sat back to gather information. But then the hatch to Missile Silo opened, and that could only mean one thing. There's another guy. Now I may have taken one of the AK kids out, but there was still at least one more. So I decided falling back and trying to flank around would be the best bet. But the only issue was in that time of me flanking around, I have no idea where the AK kid went. I took out two more, but neither of those guys were the AK. But then I thought to myself, what if those were the original two AK guys coming back? And if that's true, that means there's only one place the AK kid could have died, inside Missile Silo. So I went over to the closest bush and dropped off all the extra loot, then went right back inside with a blue card to open it up. And the second that hatch opened, I seen a body with an AK laying next to it. But unfortunately, with the AK in that spot, it was unlootable. It might have been because he was smushed, but I wasn't gonna stick around long enough and get smushed just like him. So I grabbed the kid as fast as I could and got out of there with all the loot and I was more than happy with everything I got and with the distraction now dealt with I could get back to my goal building the main base All right, that should be the whole footprint. Dude, this is fucking sick. It was literally a perfect fit. Now that I know the whole base fits here, it's time to work on upgrading this bad boy. And I started with building the TC room and then sealed in the whole entire footprint. I finished all three bunkers, the honeycomb, the shooting floor, and the roof peaks. And now, the base is done. Well, kind of. I still need to seal in the roof with some grills and get some ladder hatches, but I should be able to do that later. The real thing I need to start working on is adding electricity to this base. And I was gonna have some help with that. I made a tweet asking if there were any professional electricians around, and I got a few replies, but there was one that stuck out, and it was from a girl named Elle. And well, uh, he had some posts about electricity. She's also the designated electrician for another YouTuber, Motion. And after hearing all this and seeing her tweets about electricity, I knew she was going to be the perfect one for the job. So I messaged her over on Discord and she was ready to help right away. I made it. And with her joining, that means it's time to work on the next goal, collecting all the material for the electrical components. And for the materials, I need a ton of metal fragments, HQM, and tech trash. Luckily, I live near the perfect monument to get all that, missile silo. So Elle and I went straight straight down into it. Dude, I wonder if the AK is still here. Oh no, it's gone. Unfortunately, L didn't make it too far though. What the fuck, man? I'm not gonna lie, you're done for. So I had to run the rest of Missile Silo solo, but that's okay. The only issue was that I didn't realize that someone was watching over me. But he wasn't the only thing I had to worry about. I had no meds. And after dealing with all those scientists, I was left with 7 HP and no way to heal. Then I remembered something. Oh, I could sit on the toilet. Sitting on the toilet gives you max comfort, and having max comfort passively heals you over time. So all I had to do was chill here on the shitter and let my health rise. And while I was doing that, I wanted to make sure the exit was safe for me to leave. But unfortunately, the guy that was watching over me was already out there. And Elle found that out real quick. Oh, I'm dead. There's a guy out here. He might have killed Elle once, but she wasn't going to let that slide. And before I even had the chance to help, she was already back and took care of him. He's dead. And with the coast now clear, I ran as fast as I could back to base, securing all the missile silo loot. 
Oh my god, dude. You should be able to tell with just that one run that I was not lying when I said this would be the best monument for the material I need. With the amount of HQM and tech trash I'd got, we'd only need a few more runs like that and I'd have enough to deck this base out completely. At this point, everything was going to plan. I secured guns, secured the main base, and now I was on track to collecting all the resources I needed to finish upgrading it completely. But what I didn't realize was the guy that tried camping me while I was in missile silo wasn't gonna leave us alone. And he was smart enough to track back where L came from to our base. And now he was gonna come introduce himself. I just heard somebody jump in the base. Just open the door. I'm right here. Uh, okay, okay. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Is it the guy? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's him. 10C41, a name that you're not going to want to forget, and honestly, it's a name that's hard to forget with the amount of times he came over to the base. It felt like it was never-ending, killing him over and over again while I was trying to focus on crafting electrical components. It finally got to the point where I could craft all the ladder hatches and floor grills to seal the base completely. Let's go, dude. It is sealed. And without having to deal with him, we could finally start focusing on the electrical stuff. I wanted to start out simple with just the electric furnies and maybe a few turrets. So I set up an outer TC with a wind Make turbine sure attached to it. <gasps> and while I was doing that, L got all the electrical components set up perfectly. What the fuck, man? What the fuck is this? At the moment, we had more than enough components for turrets, but honestly, not enough guns for them. I tried running missile silo a few times, but no luck getting any pythons. And on top of that, a group came by in a tugboat, breaking all our turrets on the roof, even though there was nothing in them. Dude, there's fucking three of them breaking the turrets. What the fuck? Now they ended up managing to break every turret and then they left us alone. But I wasn't gonna just let them pull up and break our turrets for no reason. I'm going after revenge. I killed one. I killed them both. Oh wait, wait, no I didn't. Now I took both of them out, but they were not too happy about that. Oh god, they're coming over to the base. Are you dead? Oh, no, I'm not dead. I'm killing these kids. Get shit on! I got my get back by killing all of them, but they still did manage to break all the turrets on my roof. And honestly, I can't be bothered to run anything else to try to get some more. I've been playing way too long today, and it is way too late for me to keep going. I figured I'd just seal the bunker off for the night, and hopefully we would survive. The base is nowhere near unraidable, especially without the turrets needed. But we haven't really made any enemies, so there's no reason we should get offline. Right? No way. Getting off before getting more turrets down was definitely a mistake, but in Rust, you can't dwell on the losses. What I want to focus on is who raided me. I've never seen the name Tyrek before, so that was no help to me, but then I realized I still had a bed in my base, and after spawning in, I realized I wasn't the only one in here. Wait, they're still raiding. I don't think he's playing with sound right now. I'm gonna jump over his head. Damn it! 10C41, the same guy that was trying to camp me at the exit of Missile Silo yesterday, and the guy that was coming back over and over again to door camp me, waited till I got off and offlined my base. By the time I logged in, it was unfortunately too late, and he had already gained access into each bunker except for the one I spawned in. Everything that I worked so hard to get yesterday was gone. Even the base was green. 10C41 won the game of Rust. Stay on longer than your enemy and take them out in their sleep. A loss like that would be enough to take out any normal Rust player. But I'm not just any normal Rust player. I'm gonna come back even stronger for some revenge.
But I'm not working on revenge until I have my base back. I still have my starter 2x2, which will work as a base of operations for now while I collect everything up. And I already had a plan on how I would collect everything as fast as possible. I'd farm up a bunch of sulfur while making my way down towards Bandit Camp, where I'd buy a gun and a tier 2 workbench from the drone shop. And getting that tier 2 workbench means I can craft satchels to raid back into the base. All I would need to do is farm up a little bit more sulfur and let it cook. And in the time of that cooking, Elle got back on to help me get everything ready. She even seen someone selling an AK in a shop, so she bought that for me. And in no time, we had all the satchels we'd need to take the base back. Wait, I think this guy just raided the first door for us. All right, we are all patched up. All right, that should be the last door. With the base secured, I really needed to make sure something like that would not happen again. That means it's time to fully upgrade this base to the point where it's actually unraidable. And to achieve that, I'd need a bunch of laptops and cameras for turrets, a python to research to put in all those turrets, sheet metal, gears, and tech trash for all the electrical components, and last but not least, a ton of metal fragments to get the base fully sheet metal and craft up all the electrical comps. So I started with the missile silo run, instantly getting a python, turret, tesla coil, and motor most of the other components I needed. I decided recycling most of the components would be the best thing to do so I could buy a mini, cause I knew all it would take is one more missile silo run and I could get all of them back. And while I did that, L set up turrets with actual guns in it this time, and then I bought the mini, and we went over to Large Oil Rig, where I don't think I've ever gotten as lucky as this. Oh my god. That is a crazy crate. <laughs> we were slowly starting to get back on our feet, and after getting some components from Large Oil Rig, L wanted to start working on the automatic Tesla coil system. And if you don't know what that means, that means the thing that would shock people if they got on the base. <laughs> it works. Okay. What works? Why are you giggling like that? That sounds like the most <laughs> evil giggle ever. I, I, need, I need your help with something. Okay. Yeah? Uh, wait, you don't want to go out there, you'll get zapped. Um... Get zapped? So... Did you just kill yourself? Hold up. Are you dying? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. What the hell is going <laughs> I need, on? I need to turn it off, I need to turn As it off. As you can tell, Elle's making some progress when it comes to base upgrades. And while she worked on that, I went out and farmed all the metal I'd need to upgrade the base. But when I got back, I walked into this. Oh my god, I haven't been in here. Turn off your flashlight. <laughs> Look at all the lights. Bro, <laughs> what the f*** is wrong with you? This may look scary, but it's not even halfway done yet. And she was gonna give me an explanation on what's going on here, but then the sound of something distracted us. Oh, Heli's coming towards our base. But it wasn't just the sound of Heli that caught our attention. It was the sound of someone taking oh, Heli not. next to our base. But they weren't just taking it on land. They were taking it out in the water. And when Heli's taken in the water, the crates go out instantly. I grabbed a diving tank and a jackhammer and then had Elf fly me out to the ocean. All right, diver Dan out. Now, I just got to find the crates. The crates are right there. C4 rocket. M2. I'm out of here. I got every single one of the crates and I started to make my way out of there. I was home free. I got an M2, C4, and rockets. There was no shot of the guys finding me now. All I had to do was swim back to base. Oh, he's hacking. Yeah, well, after dying a motherfucking Aquaman jumping out of the water, I took a little break to let all that metal I farmed earlier cook up, and when I got back, it was time to upgrade this base fully. Dude, this thing does not look like it should be in rust. What the f***? The base was finally in a spot where it was pretty much unraidable. I had the automatic Tesla coil system, a ton of turrets, all the bunkers upgraded, and apparently L finished setting up the raid alarm too. What the f***? 
did you do? As crazy as the electricity room looks now, it's not even done yet. I still have one more big thing planned for it. But before I do that, I want to get back to working on what I put off earlier, getting revenge on 10C41. I took some time scoping out the area, and the only base that I thought could be his was this one. A chunky looking YouTube base, and if I was to raid that, it was not going to be cheap. Good thing I wasn't just farming metal when I was collecting resources for the base. I already had pretty much all the sulfur I'd need to raid him, and after using the pump jack at power plant for low grade and placing a tier 3 workbench down, I was ready to start making rockets. But before I had the chance to start, I was distracted by the sound of a rocket nearby. Whoa. Now it took me a little longer to come out of base than I would hope. I couldn't find any ammo for my AK, so I just went out with a custom to see what I could do. And since it took me so long to get to the fight, the raid was already sealed and it was just a couple guys left. Bro, buddy was and trying to run a monument. After a few guys that were alive, I looted up all the kits off the bodies, and it turns out one of them was a familiar face. 10C41. It's been a while since I've seen his name, but his name wasn't the only one I had to worry about, because the guys he was fighting weren't too happy that I made it away with these kits, and they came over to my base to check it out. I'm dead, dude. He's 1 HP. No way! Now they managed to kill me twice, but they were about to see the power of this base. <laughs> He's getting electrocuted. You're getting fucking tased. Hey, motherfucker, you don't want to stand on this base. And then being confused at what our base was gave me enough time to spawn back in, grab an MP5, and take him out. But he wasn't too happy about that. Roof camping with Balti and Tesla coils. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Their visit may not have had any significance to us right now, but what I didn't realize at the time was how much it meant to them. But I wouldn't be finding that out until much later. For now, my focus is on someone who has done everything to annoy us. And it wasn't long after seeing his dead body at the raid that he was coming back over to our base with a horse and a pump shotgun to be annoying. Oh, there's a guy to miss. Oh, oh. Are you good? No, he pumped me. He pumped me. You need to come out. LOL. LOL. How much you want to bet it's 10C41? This f bro. This f I'm sick of him. If you can't tell, I'm done dealing with this 10C41 guy. It's time to get rid of him. I spent some time crafting up all the rockets we'd need, and then I went to suss his base out with a drone. And after looking around the base, it seemed like the best way to raid him would be through the side. So I molotoped into his compound, speared out his large fernie, and then we went over with some rockets. It didn't seem like he was online at the moment, but I didn't care about an online or an offline at this point. Just in case though, I had L build a raid base for us, and then it was time to crack open this little dickhead's base. Where do I hit? Do I 16 rocket there? I wasn't exactly sure where to hit with a base like this, but I took an educated guess and went for it. And that guess was right. I hit the perfect spot. Now, I just need to keep going. I was slowly cutting through their base, but this wasn't a silent job, so people were starting to come check out the noise. However, the people weren't my main concern because we had a bigger issue. All these armored doors were draining my boom quick. And if there's another one behind this door, there's no chance I have enough explosives on me to get in this base. Dude, another armored door. We don't have enough. Still, I might as well use all the explosives I have on me to figure out how much more I need to get into this base. And in doing so, it opened up another door with a sleeper behind it. And who was that sleeper? 10C41. The 100% confirmation that this was his base made me know I couldn't stop now. So I went home, grabbed a few satchels and some explo ammo, and came back. All right, tier three. Oh my god. It was just one more door left until we had access to all their main loot. But the counter raiders were doing everything they could to be as annoying as possible. There was one sitting as far back as he could with a bolty just shooting at us. I headshot the bolty kid? While the other one was at the door of our raid base door camping. Oh, these little grubs. They were being as obnoxious as they possibly could. While I was trying to take care of the last door, I had to also take care of them. The guy outside's dead. 
I used all the explosives we had in the raid base, but even that wasn't enough. I needed to go back to base again and get more boom. But with these obnoxious counter raiders, <laughs> it was not going to be a safe trip back. I'm going to die. I died. You got to go outside. We cannot afford to lose that boom. We have no charcoal left in our base. But it wasn't just the MP5 guy I had to deal with. No, oh, I'm dead. I had to deal with a Bolty kid 200 meters out shooting me while the MP5 guy is shooting me too. Bro, how am I supposed to fight this? I headshot him. I, I need to get inside. I'm about to die. I got to heal. In the time of me healing up in base, my body was unlooted. Oh, you stopped stealing your body. I wasn't sure why or what happened to the guy. Well, that was until I seen his body slumped over from the headshot I hit with the AK. And now that L managed to get the boom to me, I could go finish this raid. Oh my god, a row of rockets. Dude, this is literally all the rockets we spent on this base. Oh my god, comps, GP, guns, armor. Holy shit, they're so fucking loaded. Holy. The base was loaded, and I needed to start getting this loot into the raid base as fast as possible. But the counterers had another idea. Bro, these rockets, there's- I- I'm so fucking loaded right now. Oh! I doubled him? No- Bro, I- I got bolted. Dude, what is this kid doing? Why is he just sitting back there bolted? The bolty killed me, but since I took the other guy out first, L was able to go over to the body and loot the boom. But the bolty guy wasn't giving up just yet. He killed me. Just keep crawling, just keep crawling. The closer you get to the base, the better. Alright, he shouldn't be able to see us here. Get inside! It was close, but I managed to make it into the raid base with the boom, and little by little I transferred all the loot out of the core. I still felt like something was missing though. There wasn't a single AK in their core. That means they had to be somewhere else in their base, and I didn't want them to have anything left after I was done with them. So with some of the boom we got from them, I went over and blew through their base. However, those annoying counter raiders weren't done messing with us yet, and apparently, now there's three of them. And this third guy was definitely a lot better than the two we were dealing with before. Dude, I just got shit on. I'm gonna come back from base with an MP5. I I, I killed AK. A MP5 guy has hit a few times too. They were good, but after taking them out once, they never showed back up. So I finished the raid. And it wasn't long before we got to those AKs I knew they had. Here they are, dude. I knew they had AKs. Oh my god. Even more. <laughs> now with knowing all the loot is out of their base and it being calm in the area, we really needed to get this loot out of this raid base. Alright. I think we got it all. Fortunately, we were able to do it without a sign of Johnny Sins and his friends. What I didn't realize was the only reason they left us alone was because they were scheming a plan of their own to get back at us. And I would find out what they're scheming when I ran into one of them at Bandit Camp. Kebab Man's recycling. Our running was anything but friendly though. It started with him trying to take our mini out with his. Oh, luckily he failed the first attempt, but he wasn't gonna stop trying to get our mini out the sky. L, L, no, he's gonna get you. No, no, it's okay, I got this, I got this. Oh. <gasps> Uh, try to come pick me up quick. I'll come get you. No, no, no. You're not going to make it. No, no, pull, it's pull, it's pull back. Pull back. <laughs> fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. You suck. In his attempt to blow up our mini, he ended up blowing up his own. And in his frustration of him being mad he failed, he ended up letting me in on what his plan was. So that's why they left us alone. They're planning to offline me. Well, that's going to be a little harder than they think. Because after that raid, we were richer than we could ever be. And now with all this loot, we put the final touches on the base. We had SAM sites, and now L even finished up the electricity room. Bro, what did you do? You like it? And with the automatic Tesla coil system, the heartbeat sensor system, the automatic raid alarm, all the turrets, all the SAM sites, and now the last thing we wanted, the automatic loot transferring. With one click of a button, we could transfer our loot from bunker to bunker. So, the raiders will never have any idea where the loot is. And with that all completed, the base was finally done. 
And after finishing the base up, I stopped my recording and went AFK for a bit. But then I came back to the sound of explosives. AK shots, what the fuck? What? I'm dead. Are they, are they inside? Now that isn't Johnny Sin's group, but I've seen that name before. These were the guys who I stole a few kits off of after countering their raid, and they came over to check out our base. And they were finally coming back for revenge. How did they kill us with that rocket? And I was confused how they killed us with that rocket, but then I noticed they were inside the base. Wait, what? They're already in here. How long have they been raiding? I just got rocketed. And after that death, I was put on a timer. So I spawned on an outer bag and then came in through the top. I'm gonna open up all these ladder hatches so they don't know which one I'm gonna go down. Oh wait, I could loot, I could loot the turret I realized bag. they broke one of the turrets and that means the gun that was in the turret would be in that bag. So I grabbed the python. I hear him down towards your left. To my left? And went in for the kill. All right, I killed him. Oh fuck, there's one more. And now the last guy managed to kill me, but L managed to kill him. I got him. All right, we got a seal. But apparently, oh, there's another. He wasn't the only one. But I didn't have to worry because I took him out. And after that, I fended off the base from anybody else who was trying to get in. They're trying to come back inside naked. Uh, they didn't have much boom on them. I hear a couple of them trying to get up the base. One, one's naked, but I hear boots. All right, killed the hazmat kid. I killed the naked too. And after killing them a few times, it left them running. Last guy's running. I got him. But there was one issue with this raid attempt. They didn't have much explosives on them. That means that they probably had some more somewhere else. So they could be coming back at any time. And it wasn't long before I heard something above our head. Oh, an MLRS is coming in. No, wait, my turbines. They're coming in again. Well, they're back. And this time, they're a lot more prepared. Oh, dude, there's a bunch of them on the hill. How the hell am I supposed to peek this? I'm gonna try seal base. L was attempting to seal the base while I fended the guys off. But there was a lot more of them than there were of us. Peeking this is so risky, man. Still, though, I managed to take a few out. Killed one. Oh, there's a guy on the hill. Guy on the hill. I killed the guy on the hill. But the rockets weren't stopping. I needed a new way to stop them. Then I thought to myself, what if I just flanked around and killed them all from behind? Although I'd need the right opportunity to make the move. So, right after I killed one of them, I ran for it. That guy's dead. But if they spot me while making this move, it's over. They'll kill me in an instant. Luckily, from the looks of it, they didn't see a thing. Well, everyone except for the pig. But still, the guys were clueless of me being here. So I was able to take out one after another. I was absolutely dominating these guys. They had no shot of winning. But then something happened that I didn't even realize was going on. My gun broke. But after how many I killed there, I knew I could do it again. So I grabbed an HV launcher and went back up to take out the last guy. I think I just killed the last one. I'm HV in the camper. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, base is on my stuff. All right, I got to destroy the lock. I should be able to get in now. Oh my god, I, I got it all. I got Taking it all. Taking control of the camper marks the end of this online raid. I got everything, and while I did that, L got the base completely sealed. We stayed on for a bit more just to make sure nothing else happened, but when no one came, we ended up getting off. However, you guys might be wondering whatever happened to Kebab Man and Johnny Sins. Well, they kept their word on coming to offline us, but they didn't realize that's exactly what we were waiting for. They're here. Ooh. Yeah, too bad they're not gonna get there offline now. Bro. Alright, I spawned in the 2x2 two two and grabbed the kit. I should be able to kill this guy. I don't know where he is. <laughs> He's lost! You get him? Yeah, 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 I think there's like one or two more left inside. Uh, killed one of them inside? I don't know if there's any more. There could be one more. Okay, okay. I killed two nakeds coming back. I don't know where this last guy is, but I'm going to try and get the stuff to seal the base. 
Oh, there's an AK kit outside. I think this is the third one. I gotta drop in. I'm gonna check the roof beats. I'm dead! I killed the naked up there. Yeah, 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 the AK kid dropped inside. I got him. Alright, let's just seal this base out. Uh, they're pissed. They thought they were offlining. Kebab Man and Johnny Sins didn't know there was no chance of them offlining us. The second they started raiding, we got notified by the raid alarm. I thought it'd be funny to let them waste their boom as I just sat there listening. These guys have no idea we're already on. They thought they were getting deeper and deeper in the base just to have us spawn in, wipe them all out, and seal the base right back up like nothing happened. But I couldn't just let these offline and bolty loving weirdos get away with trying to offline me. I knew where they lived, and I did have a ton of explosives from that online raid defense. So, I got two more guys on, and not even 10 minutes after they were trying to offline us, we were heading over to give them the online raid that they so don't deserve. Alright, I'm shooting the MLRS. Bye-bye offliners. But when we got over there, there was no sign of them. So they must have rage quit after failing to offline us. But we'll show them how an offline should be. That HQM wall is poor. I'm going to see pour through it. Woo. Oh, GL it. <laughs> TC in tier three, baby. We're in. Just these last couple garage doors, and then we're in. Oh my god. Holy HQM. All right. Now, Kebab and Johnny Sins, if you're watching this, that's how you offline raid. And just in case they don't see this, we took some pictures so they know what happened to their base. Say cheese. That should let them know what happened to their base. 